If you've been hanging around the Daddy Curbs farm for very long, you know that we have the large sulcata tortoises. We have two of them, Coco and Jack Jack. But now we have some new characters on the farm, and that is the Western Box Turtle. I'd like to show you how I turned this ordinary galvanized stock tank into a box turtle habitat. You like it, don't you? I'm going to step you through the processes, my thought process, on how I'm turning this galvanized tank, this old stock tank, into a box turtle enclosure. Step one for me was to find the right location. Now inside this space here where one of our larger tortoises lives, this was a good selection for me, I felt like, because there is some shade, a little bit of dappled sun, and a little added protection just because it's in this enclosed space. Step two was to bring in a load of sand and place it where I want the tank, level it off with a rake, that way the tank could be as level as possible right here in this spot. As I thought through the tank design, the enclosure design, I figured there needed to be a good drainage layer because I don't want it to fill up with water and drown the turtles. So I opened up the drain in the bottom of the tank, that way I could build a drain layer. This drain layer is going to be created with a piece of corrugated perforated drainage pipe, some gravel, landscape fabric, and an old trampoline top. The corrugated pipe, this is just plastic drain field type pipe with the holes in it. I'm gonna wrap this in the fabric cloth. The water can pass through the fabric cloth into the pipe, allowing it to flow freely through the drain, but gravel and soil won't be able to get through this barrier. I'm tucking the fabric inside the pipe on one end. On the other end, I'm gonna fold it over to keep out the gravel. The side that has it tucked in will be where it snugs up against the drain hole on the tank. Now I'll take a piece of fabric cloth and cover the entire bottom to help hold that into place when I put the gravel on. You could buy pea gravel, but this is uh, actually a lot cheaper than the pea gravel. It's often used uh, for concrete work. That's gonna be laid down all around this green pipe. I wanna make sure that I get plenty of gravel up here around the top part. Just make sure it stays nice and snug against the wall. I used a total of 10 bags, that's 500 pounds of pea gravel or all-purpose gravel on the bottom, just enough to create a layer on the bottom where the water is gonna be able to flow freely and through that tube that we just wrapped up. The next phase of this step of creating this drain layer is to place a heavier barrier, still water permeable. I'll be using the trampoline top because it is something that I can recycle and use. For now, I'm gonna leave it uncut and draped over the edges while I go get the soil to place in on top of that barrier. I like to come to these bulk material yards to save a little money and save on plastic bags. And uh, so they have all kinds of stuff all around. This is the pile here that I'll be getting. It's just a planting mix. And it's got sand and soil and compost and all kinds of stuff in it. Should be good for the turtles comes my guy. And 
and that's how it's done. Now that we're back from the materials yard where we got our soil, I did cut the trampoline top because I got a little concerned that the little turtles could get in there and get in the folds of that material and possibly get hurt. So now that it's cut pretty much the size of the circle, we're gonna put rocks that just came out of the landscape. Our soil here produces a lot of rocks. We're gonna take those rocks and put them around the outside edge on top of this material here. Now that the drainage layer is complete, we're gonna fill it up with soil. Hopefully I bought enough to take us up to about right here. Well, that ended up not quite as deep as I was hoping, but I think it's gonna be sufficient. The reason you need plenty of depth for burrowing is uh, when it gets cold, they need to be able to go down deep enough to where they can hibernate and they're going to stay warm enough. We're in Texas, so it's probably not that critical that they go very far in depth. So this, this is probably a good 10 inches of soil and I think it's going to be sufficient. The soil type that I'm using and that I read online that you should use for box turtles or at least western box turtles is something that's got lots of organic matter and is sandy. That way they can burrow in real well and it stays loose. You know, it's not going to clump up and be really hard to dig in. Three elements that are needed inside the tank are shelter, a place for food, and a water dish. We decided to keep it really simple at first and then we will elaborate as we learn the box turtles habits and we do a little more research on uh, what will be good for them in the tank. So for shelter, we have two structures. One is just large bricks that will be difficult for them to move. I wanted large heavy bricks set on just as a, a bridge type structure. They can get under there, protect them from the sun, and then also they can burrow in in the soil. And this is a broken terracotta pot. So far, it seems that they prefer this structure over this one, which is an interesting observation. We could just use broken pots as we have them, as we find them, and place them in different places in the uh, enclosure. The area where they're going to get fed, we decided to use a concrete circle that was molded in a pan. We got these tortoises from a lady who raised them from hatchlings, and she would feed them at a certain time of day by tapping a spoon on a concrete sidewalk. So we thought that if we had a piece of concrete in here, we could use that same training and they would feed right off this concrete, just like a plate. The other thing that they need is a place for water. And we know that it needs to be sloping and shallow, but also large enough for them to get in and crawl around. So we decided to use a large paint tray. Let me dump this water out. Remember that drainage layer, that's going to be important when we dump this water out. Oh look, we have a guest under there. Sometimes we get le leopard frogs hanging out wherever there's water. This paint tray is a large heavy duty plastic paint tray. It has a nice gentle sloping edge with some traction so they can climb out of it. And plenty of space in this end to submerge but not too deep so that they're gonna drown. So I thought this was a pretty nice solution for a water dish. And apparently frogs like to live under it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, whoa, Jenga likes frogs too. Don't do it, Jenga. It's too big for you. The cover for the turtle enclosure was a little bit tough at first to figure out how I wanted to do it. 
This is what I've come up with so far. It's made out of heavy lattice work, two befores, and a couple of hinges. The front part is pretty much a four foot by six foot semicircle. It's cut out of one sheet, four by eight sheet of lattice work, and it hinges up. The same with the back is a two foot by six foot semicircle and hinges from the back. The hinge portion is made from a 12 foot two by four that's been treated. It's cut in half to be two six foot pieces and it uses two hinges. These are just regular outdoor gate hinges. Laid side by side, these two boards hinged together allows for the front and back of the tortoise enclosure to be accessed independently. If I need to access the whole front, I can lay it back. That way it lays there nicely and I have full access to the tank. The lid needed to be created in such a way that sunlight could come through so they could get plenty of sunlight, but also it would offer some protection from predators. When we agreed to give these turtles a good home, we knew that we needed to provide an enclosure that would be good for them, something that they would enjoy living in, keep them safe and happy, and also something that would look good on our farm and uh, give us pleasure just for being here and for us to look at. So Henry and Susie, hopefully they have a good long life here on the Daddy Curbs farm. We are still early on our box turtle journey. If you have any suggestions, please leave those in the comments below. That would be truly appreciated. Thank you so much for joining me here on the Daddy Curbs farm. I'll talk to you soon. Even Jenga, the bearded dragon, gets to hang out and enjoy being outdoors in a protected space. Maybe he'll become friends with the turtles. Isn't that right, Jenga?